Good morning and welcome to Gary's Classic Cars, part two of the restoration of the XR2 Fiesta. This section includes repairs to the inner cross member behind the front wheel, floor pans and inner sills. I hope you like it and let's get started. Firstly, this is the cross member section behind the rear of the front wheel. As you can see, it's heavily corroded and along with the flinch panel just at the side. This has had previously bodged repairs on plate after plate and covered in the horrible black underseal. This is probably caused by water ingress and just corroding it through. Firstly, I cut the floor away, trim back where I could to the best of my abilities to the good solid steel, but I wanted to keep as much of the original steel as possible because I don't really want to put a foot floor pan in. So the next section was the inner sill to cut out. As you can see, these are the floor sections and inner sill sections I cut out which have just had patch on patch on patch, which is not really great and has no strength whatsoever. So once all the rusty metal was cut out, I started fabricating some new sections of the outriggers. This was done in some quite heavy grade steel to give some strength to the vehicle. Bit of bending and bashing and away we go, we have a new panel. I do like to fabricate my own panels. One, you can't buy this section and two, it gives you a bit of achievement that you have actually manufactured something that's going to last for quite a long time. Use the folder to put any bends in that I needed. So I had got the new section in position. I welded it up, ready to put the inner front floor pan in. This was marked out with a marker pen from below to the shape roughly and then cut oversized. It's the easiest way to do. The next phase was to start repairing the inner flinch panel. I got a bit of heat with my blowtorch and warmed and shaped this on my leather bag which is used old school style with the hammer and dolly and it fitted really well. This is a section of the inner sill I cut out as you can see it was quite heavily corroded on the inside and it would never have been able to clean this up. Although the top half looked okay where the wax oil had been previously it obviously burnt away when they'd done the repairs. Here's sections showing the layers there must have been about three quarters of an inch between the floor pan and the inner sill section with the old floor still in the middle so no strength whatsoever once that was all cut out i welded it all in fully seam welded along the top down the sides and put one inch weld along the bottom edge every inch or so so it was really solid and filled it with seam sealer to prevent any water ingress once the inner sill was done on the rear i started on the front this had had previously lower half of the outer sills on and was in good condition so i just cleaned off the surface rust which was very minimal once that was done i then trimmed back the new floor pan to the correct size welded it in along with the inner sill i butt welded all this in and ground it back to make it look as factory as possible which i think i achieved eventually once the floor pan was in this allowed me then to finish off the outer brace uh, behind the front wheel so i ended up welding that fully up and getting it all ready for the next stage of the external i then repainted everything in gray oxide primer including the internal finally once the car was painted i did drill some holes in the inner arch and injected wax oil in to prevent any future corrosion from where the welding had taken place all the floor pans were then painted and looked really good before applying the sound deadening onto it once I had finished the remaining welding. The next section to do was the chassis. This had been repaired previously and very, very poorly. This is a double skin section. So once I cut all the outer skin off, I had to cut all the inner skin off and weld it up and then do the outside. I butt welded this up to make it look like factory and got the results I wanted. And as you'll see later on, once it's stone chipped, it does cover really well and doesn't look like it's ever been touched. The next phase was to cut the bottom half of the front wings off. I didn't want to take the whole wings off because I wanted to keep the original factory welds. However, I had to put in some new sections, as you will see next. This was then tacked in. As you will notice, I've swayed the panel on the vehicle and not the repair panel. This helps when it gets wet the water will run over the flange and not inside the gap which i previously mentioned on my other restoration i also did the same with the front wing it is a bit more difficult to, to actually do the panel on the car but it gets a better result and still keeps the strength in 
Once done and all welded up, a quick skim of filler over the welds and a bit of a rub down and you get an almost invisible repair and it still has the original look. Did the same with the front, spot welded it originally and then went and kept filling the gaps in so there was virtually no gap and it was fully welded. This prevents distortion. At the same time I had to put a one inch section with a return edge on the front panel because this had been corroded away with the previous bodge repairs. Here we have got now the filler to cover all the joints and the few little dints in the wing which had been damaged during the build. But now it's all rubbed down and primer and looks very well. The next section was to repair the inner wings. This had had a again previously bodge repairs at the top near the bulkhead and also at the bottom down where the indicator is. Quite a common place for these to corrode. So I cleaned it all off and then bought my repair section and fitted it in. I also had to fabricate the indicator surround. This is a gap panel that fits between the inner wing and the outer wing. As you can see the corroded section and I made a new piece and put a return flange on to give it some strength. I did leave a bit more of a gap than factory so that it won't touch the outer wing and start corrosion again in the future. Now this is the wing all repaired with a new piece of metal in. A bit awkward but it was worth the awkwardness to get the results without taking the whole wing off. Same with the section at the front. The next bit was the battery tray I had two little holes in however on further investigation ended up cutting most of it off and remaking a new piece. I believe these can be obtained but again I just like to repair my own. One it's the original still in the car and two gives you a better sense of achievement. Finally I got to stone chip all the front again after cleaning it off and red oxide primer in it and that helps with the protection because I would plan to use this vehicle quite a lot and I want to be weatherproof properly. The next stage was to stone chip the floor pan and the chassis and as you can see the repairs almost look invisible which is what I wanted. Also the floor where I grafted in the new section is blended in really well. Finally getting down to the primer stage rubbing the filler down to get rid of any dents or any repairs that had been done. As you can see in the door it's very slight dent so I have filled that to get rid of it. Then started applying the primer which highlighted a few other areas which I had to just address with the filler. Eventually I got it back down on its wheels and ready to move out of the garage. Now the car's in primer, or half of it, I moved on to the interior and put some new sound deadening down which I applied and then rolled it out to get rid of any creases and looks really well. Final stage in this section was the battery tray all primed and the inner wings all ready for paint. So this concludes part two of the Fiesta restoration so far. So now we have now got the near side done, we now carry on to the off side and the bonnet along with all the other ancillary items.